Hi there, I'm Mitchell from BrainFart Studio, and this is my latest game, Thoraxis. It was made over two weeks for GDKO Round 3, and today I'm going to show you how I made it and what I learned from it. Let's get started. We found out the results from Round 2, and thankfully I qualify for Round 3. I ranked 18th out of 54, and that's in the top third of entry, so I will gladly take it. The theme was announced at the same time, and this round, the challenge is to create a boss fight. Now, I've never actually done this before, and I'm not really sure how to go about implementing a boss fight. So, as I went about my evening, I listened to a few YouTube videos about boss design, just to get some extra ideas. I spent the rest of the night coming up with about 25 different ideas that I could work on. Then, my wife and I narrowed down the choices based on the round's judging criteria, and what I felt like I could reasonably implement within two weeks. We narrowed down the list to about 10 things that could meet the requirements. Some were mechanics, others were themes or settings. So I felt like there were a good amount of possibilities to work with. I searched through the asset packs until I found one that looked like it would also be a good fit. Free Robot Warfare Pack by Matt Walkton, and I'll have the link in the description. I also set up my Unity project, my GitHub repository, the itch.io page, and I went ahead and set up CICD to automate the build and deploy process, and if you're interested in how I did that, I'll also have the link to that in the description. Oh, and we were under a tornado watch, so I decided not to do any actual work on the game just yet. With my list of ideas, the asset pack, and some sleep, I spent the day brainstorming and making a development plan for the game. After some amazing entries, I reached out to fellow GDKO participant Kabuin, who placed first in round one and third in round two. He's clearly doing something right, so I reached out for advice. He recommended getting as much implemented as quickly as possible, then reevaluate at the end of the first week to see what gameplay elements were still missing, and switch gears then. So that's the approach that I'm taking this round. Today, I set up the player's movement, Gave him something to shoot at, added a background and clamped both the camera and player movements, and I created a small roguelike upgrade and penalty system whenever you defeat a boss. The focus here was on the first boss. I gave it three abilities, a move and shoot, a quicker charge towards the player, and some spawn minions that target the player. And these abilities are used in three different phases, that each get progressively harder as the fight goes on. There are still some bugs in it, like his aim being terrible, charging off the screen, or shooting himself when facing to the left. I'm not an ambi turner. But nothing that's game breaking. And with my focus being on implementing as many features as possible as quickly as possible, I'm satisfied enough with it to move on. I also added in some background music, which you can hear a little bit of in the background of this video. I added in a second boss, and for simplicity, I just stuck with the three ability and phase system. A move and shoot just like before, but this time there's also a five shot spread and a rapid fire kind of wavy pattern. It has the same issues as the previous boss with like bad aim, moving off screen, and shooting himself whenever he's facing towards the left. It's likely the same issue, so at this point, I'm still not really worried about it. I wanted to work on the third boss, but I just wasn't feeling it that day. One of the judging criteria was, would you come back to this game again and again? So I decided to add in more of the upgrade and penalty choices. This way, it's more like a roguelike game, where the player can make choices and play the game that they want, but the options that you're given are never going to be the same. Upgrades include things like increased fire rate, more damage, faster movement speed, and a spread shot. Penalties include reduced player movement speed, or fire rate, faster enemies, and additional enemies being spawned in the field. Also, there's a score system. Yeah, I took the day off. I added in the third boss, or at least the head. It moves back and forth like the old game Centipede, gradually speeding up as it loses health and eventually it starts shooting multiple projectiles from its mouth as well. This was the last feature I really wanted to add, 
so I shifted gears a little and started working on bug fixing. The animations for the spider boss, the spiderling minions, and the player were all adjusted and are looking pretty nice. Today was all about fixing as many of the bugs that I found in the development process as I could. The spider and hornet boss now stay on the field. They don't shoot themselves whenever facing to the left. I know! I turned left! And then a couple issues with the pause menu that I had noticed were that the game still moves in the background and you could still take damage, as well as sometimes a double upgrade window would show up anytime you clear a boss. Both of those issues were corrected. I also added in this custom mouse cursor so that you can more accurately see where you're shooting. And I noticed the accuracy of firing wasn't going directly to the mouse position. So I found the issue with my math and corrected it. And I did the same with the spider boss's projectiles. I didn't have a lot of time this day, so I only made a couple changes. The spawners now scale in difficulty. The longer you play the game, the more enemies spawn. And stylistically, I made two small changes. The update and piddly system now has a basic UI, and I added in an arcade font. This was the halfway point of the competition, so I took Jabun's advice and reevaluated where I was currently at. I decided to take the day off from actual development work, but I still created a test build and got a couple playtesters, so if you were one of them, I really appreciate it. Using their feedback and the list that I had already come up with myself, I decided on what course of action I was going to take for the upcoming week. <laughs> Using a lot of the player feedback I received, I realized there was a pretty big oversight. My player didn't have any health, so I implemented the health system, and I also made two other small changes. The player now faces towards the mouse cursor rather than in the direction that they were moving, and there was a slight issue with the spider boss's accuracy. The further you got away from its X value, the more off its aim would be. <laughs> Continuing with the health system, I made sure the player could die when they ran out of health. I also made it so that they could collide with the enemies, not just the projectiles. I also made each boss have its own theme music. At my wife's request, I added in a mini-map so you could more easily keep track of where the boss was when it wasn't on screen. I also updated the centipede boss. I already had the head working, but none of the body segments were attached, so I added that in. And finally, I corrected some of the minion animations. One of the biggest pieces of feedback I got from my playtesters was the penalty system. I would give the player an upgrade choice, but then immediately penalize them at the same time, and a lot of players didn't like this. So instead, I chose penalties that focused more on the enemies instead, such as spawning more minions, the minions having more health or moving faster. I also started adding in a little bit of polish, such as some basic sound effects and some particle effects on the bosses when their health gets low. This was the last full day I knew I had to work on my game, so I added in the last few polish elements I could, such as some particle effects around the third boss, particle effects whenever the bullet impacts with an enemy, and a game over screen that displays your high score and lets you play it again. Typically, I like to work right up to the deadline, but I didn't have that option in this case because I had to leave town the next day. So I went ahead and created my final build, submitted it to itch.io, created my game page, and submitted it to GDKO round three. I've been making games for a little over a year now, and I think I learned more from this round than I have from any other game that I've ever made. First, reach out to those you admire for help when you need it. I reached out to both Jabuin and Inmark Games, and I'm very thankful for all the input that they gave me. Next, get your game in front of playtesters as early as you can. I reached out to a couple of other GDKO contestants, and they gave me some fantastic input. I really appreciate you guys, and I hope you can see all your suggestions in the final game. And finally, keep trying new things with every game you make. I tried a couple new things this round, such as making a mini-map, working with particle effects, which surprisingly I'd never done before, adding in roguelike elements, and learning how to make a boss fight. And make sure you're learning from those things too. 
About 10 days into the competition, I realized how much easier the boss fight would be if I just used a state machine. Surprisingly, I didn't do that, but now I know for the future. Thanks for watching my very first devlog. If you're interested in playing the game, I'll have a link to it in the description below. And if you've got any questions, concerns, comments, or ideas, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Thanks guys.